It's 9 a.m., time for the only Garden Talk radio show in Milwaukee. Tell your friends, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener is on the air. Join us and let's grow together. Coming up on the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show today, it's about composting, large and small, and what you need to know in order to be successful at it. Plus, the time of season is here for farmer's markets. The information that you should know before going into the farmer's market and how you can get the best deal. As well as from Indiana, blogger and author Carol Mitchell will be with us, as well as your garden questions and our garden answers. Garden Talk Radio is on the air in Milwaukee, and it all starts right now. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show with your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird, some of the realest gardeners that you'll ever know, always willing to share their knowledge, mistakes, and working to grow together. Founders of the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com that contains over 1,100 garden videos to show and teach others to grow some of what they eat. Join them for the next hour as they cover practical gardening information that has worked for them and more. Now here they are. It is the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show on 860 AM WNOV and W293CX 106.5 wherever you may be listening However you may be listening, whether on those particular stations, the TuneIn app, the Simple Radio app, or anywhere in between, we are live in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I am your host, Joy Baird. Beside me is my wife, co-host, best friend, gardening partner. Hi, Baird. Uh, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com is the website that contains over 1,100 plus garden videos, short and long format for you, for your gardening expertise and informational necessities there. You can search for specific topics and uh, find all types of things there. You can contact us uh, during the next hour with your garden questions on the Ivy Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard Hotline. Yes, the Ivy Organic 3-in-1 Plant Guard naturally protects plants against damaging sunburn, insects, and rodents, protects newly installed plants and trees, shields pruned and damaged surfaces for use on your roses, fruit and nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs. This product is non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic. For more information, visit ivyorganics.com. You can also email us at twvgshow at gmail.com. You can hit us on Twitter. Our Twitter handle is twvgshow, or you can hashtag twvg. Also, to sign up for a weekly email, you can text 345-345 to twvg. I forgot to say you can call in oh, at yeah, 414-444-5250 anytime during the show with your question, comments, idea whatever suggestion suggestion yeah so we we want to welcome those that uh, we were at um what i was else? at the waukesha oh, yeah, community yeah. uh, waukesha courthouse this past wednesday uh doing a, a, the final of three talks on their in their health and wellness program we want to welcome those individuals and we were also at blue Mills on wednesday um so we want to welcome those people we want to remember we forgot last week to welcome those who are listening from L- uh, elmira elmira is that the correct term elmira elmira and uh, uh, we forgot to mention those uh, we right. talked to them and i you know I, I don't know who's listening or where they're listening from so i just want to make sure that uh, we did remember those individuals so we've got um a lot of information to cover here uh, we do. We do we have. We do have two talks this yeah, week we that will wrap up our spring series on Tuesday, Muskego mm-hmm. on uh, straw, um, growing yeah, straw bells, and then on it doesn't wrap it up. We have a well a the, the spring series. No, but it, it, we have one the following Wednesday. Right, I think, it, this something. week is the last of the until July. Or Tuesday, yeah, whatever. Thursday. Um. So then we have then in West Dallas. Ten common problems you'll face in your vegetable garden, and both of those talks are and that's at the West Alice Public Library. Both those talks at Muskego and West Alice are from seven to eight. So uh, until well, then we have the following Tuesday we have one another one in Muskego, and that wraps up the spring series until July. So we've got a lot of talks. There's still opportunities for you to come and learn. Uh, based on what you want and uh, find out where we will be at, where you might be at. You can find that under the Come See Us tab at the website, thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com. So we want to talk about composting, Holly. Everybody wants to compost, and it's something that people feel is a difficult uh, thing to do. You get, people think you have to have a big pile in the backyard or the back 40, and if you're in an urban lot or a small uh, place, you can't do that, and that's simply not the case. No, and there's there's ways you can compost even in, like, an apartment. 
Well, so right, and there's a number of different types. It's not just put it in a pile and walk away. There's different levels and different types of composting, and we're going to cover some of those because I just don't want people to think if if I don't have a big backyard or a field, I can't compost. Right, and if you if you live in a situation where you might you're afraid that raccoons or other wildlife might get to your compost, you can make a compost uh, in a closed compost bin. Or, obviously, you can buy one as well. But either way, you have that option. Um, But you want to think about what you're putting in your compost. So um, there's a few things you can put in there. Yard trimmings, food waste. So food waste would exclude anything but, like, dairy, meats, or bones. Now, with that being said, you could put that in your compost pile if you had it way back out next to the woods in the back Right, in your, like, back 40. Right. Right. But I'm talking about urban urban composting here. So that's... um, that's definitely what you want to uh, you want to think and the about reason is why is those will compost. break down. It will take time, but those will break down. But the thing is, you're going to attract animals. That's what we're avoiding by not including cheeses and greases and bones and meat. We're wanting to avoid those critters that we don't want to end the compost pile disturbing it. Uh, so let's talk about the, really the list, and that's the list of what you can't put in your compost pile is far smaller than the list of things you can put in your pile. But there's two different types of piles, and we talked about this with Michelle Ball a couple of weeks ago. There's a cold compost process and a hot compost process. Right. So if you're doing cold compost, that's when you just take a combination of whatever you have, whether it be food waste, yard trimmings. Um, you could even put, like, newspaper in there things anything that is going to kind of break down you could do a cold compost process and you just keep adding to it just keep adding to the heap and then as you can kind of turn it over occasionally if you want and it kind of breaks down over time hot composting is a more active process it's a more chemically aerobic process where you're taking a combination of the nitrogen which is natural the chemicals not like man-made pour in it's the you right the aerobic yeah, chemical right, aerobic process chemical, is, is right. a it's a chemistry term. With, with the oxygen. Right. So <clears throat> so you have this process, and um, so you're mixing nitrogen, which are the greens, which are things like grass clippings, f- uh, food waste are two major greens, any sort of weeds. Coffee grounds. Coffee grounds. Those are all nitrogen-based uh, in, in the compost world. And then you have the carbon, which are the browns, so that's things like twigs, um, Leaves, leaves, shredded paper, shredded paper dry paper, material. Like more dry, yeah, yeah. Dry, dry material. That's a carbon. So you have the combination of the two, and those work together to help break each other down in a, and that's a hot compost. And your temperatures will get internally up to 140 to 160 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's perfect, and that speeds up the process. The advantage to the hot compost rather than the cold compost is whatever you add into that compost pile, let's say you're weeding and the weeds have seed pods on them, those seed pods will be burnt or will bake in that compost pile where the germination is no longer viable. If you just com- continue to add the grass clip or the weed seeds and all that stuff into your and, and like you know pumpkin seeds or, or melon seeds or whatever you throw the whole thing in there on a cold compost, those seeds are still viable. So you may break they may break down to a soil base I and mean, a small you know it looks like soil, but you introduce that into your containers or your garden. You got a bunch of weed seeds coming up. So you want to keep that in mind. Now, the ideal size of a compost pile is three foot by three foot by three foot by three foot, one cubic yard. Mm -hmm. Now, we all don't have that availability. (laughs) So whatever size you can make, larger, the more material... And the more it's going to uh, heat up if you're going to do the hot compost method, the quicker it will break down. Some people can make compost in about 14, 21 days because they're on this. This is what they do uh, in some instances. And other people will add um, alcohol to it, like a beer, to add, to stimulate the, the microbial life in it to uh, speed up even quicker. But maybe we just want to put a pile in the backyard – nicely maybe make a little corral a little pin for a little uh, pile of it and it'll break down in a couple of years because you just don't feel comfortable or you don't want to throw your tomato uh, peels or your your cucumber scraps whatever in the garbage because you know eventually this will break down you can feed your soil there are two other methods in which you don't even need a compost pile but you do need some land it's called trench or pit composting um, which means You have the fresh scraps of vegetables or coffee grounds or fill in the blank. You go out in the garden or even the yard and you dig a a ditch essentially, layer that in there, you know, a nice layer. Let's say you you have a a two-foot ditch by six inches. You move that sod back, go down about six inches, put that 
material in there, put the sod and soil back on top of it, and it breaks down and disappears. It feeds the soil. So you can also do that with your garden too, but you want to strategically place that in positions in which you're not growing this year because that does heat up in the ground and you can burn your roots but you can remember okay this was the place where i did the trench composting or pit composting this year so next year it'll be nice and fertile and i can put my uh, plants in that area but again it may not heat up to the temperature in which those seeds will be killed that you're putting in the ground now right, peels that's... scraps that type of thing you're not going to worry if you're putting physical seeds in the ground uh, you want to keep that in mind and there's different there's different compost accelerators i guess you could call them yes. that, on the market um where it speeds up your compost process it's it's i think it's kind of pricey isn't it yeah, it, yeah if you want to accelerate there's plenty of ways online to do it organically affordably to speed it up if you're wanting that return of that compost for your garden very very quickly right so there's that option too. Um, so then there's vermiposting, right. which is something you can actually do in like a Rubbermaid bin, right? Um, with there's worms. Some construction that yeah, goes yeah, along you have with it. Yeah. You have to. You do have to get worms for that. And reg, reg wigglers are what wigglers, you want, yeah. not backyard no. worms. No, <laughs> not your backyard worms. Right. And there's many different instructions online for that as well. The essential concept here is you have a bin, you put the red wigglers in, you put food scraps on the uh, on the top or mix in a little bit and over a course of a week or two they will break this down they'll eat it up and they will create what is called worm casting or their manure which is very very good for your garden or your containers or your pots in the house and And i just want to mention you might not think worms produce a lot of manure but one worm one single worm can produce up to a third a pound of their own waste a year right so that's that's not bad for a tiny little and and you don't have to worry about you know once the worms get to they understand their community inside that bin and once they get to a population level that is uh too much too much or or close to too much they will stop reproducing so you you don't have to worry about oh i've got too many worms i got to create another bin now if you take a whole bunch of worms out of that bin and put in another bin they will begin reproducing and fill that bin up as well but it's a great way to you know it's a great kids project as well and you can there's ways of removing those but it's a it's it's ideal say if you live an apartment or something you want to compost yes. and you have maybe have like a little patio garden. It doesn't garden. smell either, by the way. No, and maybe you have like a little patio garden you're like, I would love to have my own compost. You know, this is a good option. And there are large industrial size worm composting facilities because they sell the worm castings. Uh, they have, you know, that going on all the time. And if you do have your own compost pile, we'll end on this note, you do not want to put your cat or dog feces in that because they have pathogens that are harmful so you don't want to compost that manure there are other animals in which that manure can be composted or directly applied to the garden or your uh, containers but dog and cat you don't want to do that because it can lead to uh, problems with uh, your health as well so that's just a small snippet of composting on big and small maybe that'll give you some ideals in which you can um use on your property in your house Um, when we come back and if you're going to walk away from the radio be sure you download the simple radio app from your app store for free and search WNOV and you can take us with you Uh, the entire show we're going to talk all about farmers markets if you've never been to one don't worry about it we've got it all covered and how the procedure goes and what you need to know right after this Twenty four seven three sixty five. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener dot com has all the gardening information you need: videos, digital magazines, replays of shows, and more. Garden seeds do not have to cost a fortune. Just ninety nine cents at migardener.com. Now with over four hundred and fifty varieties of non GMO heirloom and organic flower, vegetable, and herb seeds available year round. Pay less and get more seeds. Shipping as low as $2.50. That just makes sense. Go to migardener.com for seeds and garden needs, tools and special blend fertilizers. migardener.com. It's that simple. Family owned and operated. 
Here at Outpost Natural Foods, it's not just that we're community-owned that sets us apart. It's the fabulous foods we sell. We celebrate Earth Day every day by offering our customers the finest natural and organic food selections in greater Milwaukee. Outpost local farmers and vendors provide our stores with a delicious selection of fresh seasonal produce that you won't want to miss. Outpost stores are located in Milwaukee, Wauwatosa, Bayview, and Mequon. We're a real Milwaukee original where anyone can shop and anyone can join. For the whole scoop about Outpost, we invite you to visit www.outpost.coop. Do you enjoy hanging baskets but struggle to keep them properly watered? The Plant Booster Self-Watering System is a mechanical system that will ensure optimal soil moisture at all times by reacting to the weight of each plant. The weight of each plant tells the system how much water it needs. Unlike a timer-controlled system where all plants get water at the same time, whether they need it or not. Also ideal for condos or apartments with no outdoor water source. Check out details, videos, and extensive explanation and ideas for application at plantbooster.net. Flame Engineering, home of the Weed Dragon, the perfect propane torch kit for home and garden use. For killing weeds, no need to pull or spray. 100 other uses. Find out more at flameengineering.com. Root Assassin, a garden tool that does all the root functions with its advanced shovel that has serrated edges on both sides. Find out more information at rootassassinshovel.com. Rhubarb in several colors. This garden fun fact is sponsored by manuretea.com. Get your three-pack today. Drop the tea bag in water. Let steep, then feed your swamp, not your plants. 100% organic. Find out more at manuretea.com. Always free shipping. The redder the stalk, the sweeter the taste. Green rhubarb can also be eaten. It's just a different variety. All rhubarb is quite bitter in taste and therefore makes a great substitute for cranberries. Keep in mind, leaves attached to the rhubarb stalk are poisonous. Purple Cow Organics quickly and naturally increases the uptake of nutrients and water to your plants with their new bioactive vegetable supercharger designed to meet the unique needs by helping the living organisms in the soil help plants uptake the nutrients more quickly through their roots and leaves. Find out more at purplecoworganics.com. I know you're looking for natural and organic food, but at a great price. I found the place. Woodman's has what you need. Woodman's offers a huge natural and organic selection with some of the area's largest organic meats, produce, and dairy departments. Shop consciously, but it won't break the bank. They have aisles of all the organic food, snacks, and treats you've been looking for so you and your family can eat healthier without overpaying. Visit their Milwaukee area store locations, Kenosha, Menominee Falls, Oak Creek, and Waukesha, or visit woodmans-food.com to find the nearest location to you. It's that time to get your lawn lush and green with the Chapin Spreader, the broadcast spreader that outperforms all in their class. Get consistent results year after year as if you'd hired your own professional lawn service. Find Chapin Spreaders online or order through your local Home Depot, Lowe's, True Value, or Do It Best Hardware stores. To see the full line of Chapin lawn and garden products, go to www.chapinmfg.com. This season, arm yourself with the better spreader, Chapin. Blue Mel's Garden and Landscape Center offers an awesome selection of high-quality garden and landscape products. We have just the plants you're looking for. Annuals, perennials, veggies, herbs, and more. Plus, you can always count on us to answer all of your questions and offer expert advice. Blue Mills also carries the largest selection of bulk landscape materials in the area. Enjoy a beverage from our coffee shop while your kids run around in our huge playground. Join our growing list of highly satisfied customers. Visit the garden center that offers everything you're looking for. Visit Blue Mills today. Blue Mills, 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener is brought to you by the following. Handy Safety Knife, BioSafe, Tall Earth, Chapin International, The Plant Booster, Ivy Organics, Woodman's Market, Blue Mills Landscape and Garden Center. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show. Well, if, if I know so much, how come I ain't rich? <laughs> Some of the wealthiest people are the ones with the least amount of money, Mike. Oh, I, that, can I write that down? Yeah, that, that's, that's yours. You can use that. With your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. What's well, the time of season where farmer's markets, well, some farmer's markets go nearly year-round, but predominantly we're familiar with farmer's markets occurring during the warmer parts of the month, May through October, and maybe you've never gone to a farmer's market, and and 
A couple of reasons why you would want to uh, go to a farmer's market would be, one, the fresh produce. Two, you're keeping the dollars in your community. And three, uh, you get it's, there's more than just fruits and vegetables at a farmer's market, isn't there, Holly? Right. So there's uh, fruits, some fruits. Uh, there's definitely vegetables. Uh, but then there's other things like honey. Um, there's other edibles. So things like honey, even some different pickled items, can- home canned items that are sold, jams, jellies, things baked like goods. that. There's baked goods, yes. Um, and then sometimes there's even more natural products. Like I've bought soap from farmer's markets. Um, I've bought bison meat, so buffalo meat, meat from farmer's meat, yeah. markets. So there's meat. Um, so just it, it kind of runs the D- gamut. Depends on what market you're going to, what farmer's market you're going to, obviously, uh, uh, there's multiple ones just in this area within, you know, a few minutes of uh, downtown to Mequon to Brown Deer. They're all over the place. Right. So there's there's a lot of farmer's markets out there. And if you're not sure, you can definitely – there's one resource called the Farm Fresh Atlas, and you can Google search that, and that's for Wisconsin, southeastern Wisconsin. Otherwise, you can just search farmer's markets. You might see signs, like if you – are in your community, you might see a sign that says farmer's market here on Tuesday or whatever. So you want to definitely look into that. Right, and that's um, the thing. Farmer's markets are not 7 to 11 on Saturday mornings. They, they, they run all week no, long. No, like um, the one, the I go to the Brown Deer one and it's on Wednesdays and it goes until I think like 6 or 2 7 to 6 p.m. or something like that, yeah. yeah. So, so it's, they, usually, they usually happen like in the afternoon because they want the farmers to – to harvest in the morning and then bring it to the market. And that's the thing. It's not like they harvested last week Tuesday and now it's a, a week ago, a week from, uh, you know, on Thursday. Most of that stuff's been harvested within a few hours of it sitting on the table if you're walking by it. Right, definitely. So it's, it's pretty fresh. And sometimes if they have something that they want to sell and you're not sure if you like it, you can always ask for a sample. Let, let's say uh, a ground cherries. Right, and actually that's where I sampled a ground cherry was at a farmer's market. I didn't even ask. They were just like, here, try this. <laughs> right. And it, that's how, yeah. yeah exactly. So, and it, the other thing you want to keep in mind is you can kind of shop around at farmer's markets. So, like, you might be like, okay, I'm really looking for some cabbage, mm-hmm. right? So, like... You want some cabbage, and somebody might have it for a dollar or something, and then you go someplace, and they have, like, a bigger one for a dollar or uh, maybe, like, two for a dollar. Right. I don't know. If I mean, there's parameters in which the farmer's market, I guess, agency has set the where you can't gouge the customers. Obviously, somebody's not going to pay $5 for a head of cabbage, but they all kind of keep it within the same range. Now, one might be a quarter higher or lower, and if you're a, a penny pincher, that quarter is a big deal if you're buying multiple things for a quarter less somewhere uh, at a different table than the one you're looking at. Right. You can save, you know, 4 or $5 type of situation. And if you're, if you're a coffee lover, uh-huh. there's a lot of times there's coffee, like fresh, not, not like coffee beans, like fresh coffee. So you could get yourself a cup of coffee and walk around the farmer's market. Now, what what do we want to know about payment here? Because what, what options are available? They typically prefer cash. Okay. Um, it depends. Like, I know if they're a vendor that sells... Maybe a large, larger dollar item like soap or natural body products or whatever they may accept the the credit card. A lot of people have those portable apps where you can just swipe the card these days because it's more convenient. But I would definitely like for the actual farmers, I would just bring cash. Make sure you have cash. What, what about the, the, some of these farmers markets accept the what is it, the EBT card? The some do accept the EBT card yeah. or the SNAP card, whatever you want to call it. You and, have, and have some to, also. Pr- do like for you get double your value on it too, right? So if you're going to pay a dollar, you actually it's, it's I think worth West two, Dallas okay. might do that. You have to you, you have yeah, to do, look do, into do, it, right? Re- yeah. Research, but that's a, a value there. Instead of spending one dollar, you're actually spending two for the value of one. You're getting two for a dollar. You, you know, fifty percent reduction there. Um, and sometimes you can buy seedlings at farmers mm-hmm. markets too, especially as we are getting close to Memorial Day. You might see the the plants being sold as well. So make make a trip around. Make a list. And, and then make a trip around. I don't think you should make a list. Well, I mean, here's what an I idea. here's I, an ideal of what I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. Uh, make make a round of all the tables to kind of figure out what everybody's got because everybody's got different size for fruits and vegetables there. Try to find the best value, uh, as well as if you are trying to grow something. One, you can email us at twbgshow at gmail dot com, or you can ask the farmer, "Hey, you've got beautiful fill in the blank. What what's your secret? How do you?" Do? And they'll tell you. How to yeah, grow it. They will. They'll tell you, one, if it's organic, if they're growing it organically, if it's somewhat chemical-based. That's another that thing. thing. You can ask questions at the farmer's market. You ask them, how do you grow this? 
Or you can ask them, did you add pesticides? Right. And there's different pesticides. There's the spray and the powder. Mm-hmm. Or you can ask them, you know, if it's organic or whatever. So definitely, um, you definitely want to look into that. Now, when you go, you can, they, they'll have boxes or bags for you. But it's you would suggest. I always bring my own bags. Um, they don't mind giving you the, the plastic bags. But if you think about that, that incurs a cost to them to supply that. So if you have your own bag. Even if it's just like your own plastic bag from the grocery store, bring it. Just use it. Right. They, they will be very appreciative of it. And most of them, um, they, they come back on a regular basis. And if you're looking for something specific, they may know where you can find that particular item. Right. Or like if you want a large quantity uh-huh. and they have the ability to provide that for you, it might take them a couple of weeks. I know we bought flour from a farmer and we ordered however many pounds two, ahead two, of time. I think it was two 10-pound drums. Right. And we ordered that ahead of time, and then we were able to go back and get it. Right. So that's it. But, yeah, if you want to go to farmer's markets, I encourage you to go. It's a much – value is incredible. Uh, You can buy things so affordably. They're fresh. They're hand-picked pretty much that day, if not that hour or within that hour. And – there's a number of places. Again, where's that location on the website? You can find your, your local, local farmer's market, whether you're in Wisconsin. Well, I guess Wisconsin right now. And uh, Well, there's the Farm Fresh Atlas, mm-hmm. and I've seen that actually at Outpost. They'll put them out there. But also you can just do a Google search for farmer's market and put your zip code in. You will be surprised how close one may be to you uh, in, in your location. But, yeah, we've been to farmer's markets. There's some big ones, some small ones. Um, the the farmer doesn't hang around too long if they're very they're not very customer oriented orientated uh, they want your business they're going to help you and tell you what the information the correct information about it and uh, get the, the the stuff you you want and need for your particular uh, situation um, and, and you've never really <clears throat> had you know problems with farmers markets they've been pretty um, pretty fr- they've been very oh, friendly they're all, yeah they're all friendly. Uh, we'll go to the Ivy Organics 3-1 Plant Guard Hotline. We have a caller. Caller, you're on the air. Uh, good morning. Good, good morning to the both of you. Good morning. Uh, and good morning, Mr. Debo. Good morning, Milwaukee. Well, so glad you're speaking about the farmer's market. I don't get to them as often as I would l- like to and love to because I know they are good, but I'm so glad that you're speaking about this this morning, you know. Uh, Tyrone W. is my name for, for the do- both of you uh, that don't know me. Um, but I'm glad you mentioned that because I've had Bison Burger like twice it is so hard to find, so I'm glad you mentioned that because I would love more out to find uh, that bison meat and bison burgers at more places there because they're so expensive now. I mean, you go to like El Greco's, you're paying ten dollars for a bison burger, you know, but it's more healthier for you though. Um, uh, it's more healthier for you. I, I do more uh, more lamb, and uh, I've even I've even acquired a better taste for the goat goat meat even you know mm-hmm. i don't do, i don't do any pork at all because i used to get the real bad headaches from it so lamb goat uh you know these bison burgers i mean i you know very rarely do i get anything off the cow anymore unless i just say oh i've got to you know if I, i've got a craving for you know a steak or a roast or something i may do that like uh six months or something you know i i don't do too much off the cow either so, but I, I grab it because I love me some oxtails, and I can eat me some oxtails almost year round. <laughs> but uh, um, I basically get get those from Bunzels, though, and they are meaty. They're big. I mean, they look like kneecaps. They're so big <laughs> over there. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I just wanted to say I thank you for sharing that with us, and um, I, I'll try and get around to some so I can you know uh, see if I can get a hold of some more of that that bison meat, that bison burgers. They're great burgers. Uh, I, I just love it. I love me some bison. So thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Now I'll look forward to getting out to some farmer's markets. Well, thank you well, for, thank you for calling, thank you. So with that being said, when we come back, um, uh, Carol Michael will be with us. She is a blogger and author from Indiana. She'll join us with some of her gardening techniques to help us all be better gardeners. Got a question? Email the show at twbgshow at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. 
The Tree Diaper is an advanced plant hydration system. It is an innovative device that captures and holds the water around your plants. Once full, and hydrates them slowly when the plants need it over a period of 30 days. From half to 30 gallon capacity based on your needs. And easy to install even for a first time gardener. The Tree Diaper reduces weeds, protects plants, enhances root growth, and prevents overwatering. Whether you're growing trees, vegetables, flowers, house plants, in containers, or the ground, your plants will benefit greatly by allowing the Tree Diaper to do the work for you. Find out more at TreeDiaper.com. Made in the USA. An Oya is an unglazed, porous clay pot with a short neck and a wider belly. Bury your Oya neck deep in your raised bed, container, or ground garden and let the Oya do your watering by releasing water as needed. How? By soil moisture tension for all you techies out there. This is an eco-friendly, efficient, ancient way to water your plants using up to 70% less water than other irrigation methods. It saves you time and is easy to install. Find a retailer through DrippingSpringsOyas.com. Smart watering, easy gardening. The Handy Safety Knife is a patented, high-quality knife that's worn like a ring, so it's always conveniently at hand and very easy and efficient to work with. That's why you'll find the Handy Safety Knife at work in a wide range of industries and applications. Learn more at HandySafetyKnife.com. Place an order for your business. Call toll-free, 866-294-3424. The Gardener's Hollow Leg, the debris and harvesting bag you wear, comes with its own belt attachment, perfect for doing light pruning, weeding, harvesting on the ground or on a ladder, and many other uses. Find out more at thegardenershollowleg.com. Save 10% by using the word veggies at checkout. All Earth Wood Treatment All-in-One Preservative and Stain offers lifetime protection and creates a unique silver-aged wood finish. All ingredients are non-toxic, eco-friendly, perfect for garden beds and veg trunk. Find out more at tallearth.com. Free shipping on all orders. Use coupon code W-I-S-C-O-N-V-E-G to save 15% off orders placed at TallEarth.com. Eco Garden Systems is a revolutionary way to grow food. A fully contained raised platform with a conventional watering system. Solar power unit optional. Made from recycled material in the U.S., Eco Garden Systems Raised Garden Bed offers sustainable organic gardening that is environmentally sound, quick and easy to set up, maintain, and fun to use. Fill your garden with soil and plant your seeds. Your Eco Garden will take care of the rest. Can set up in backyard, patio, and even your driveway, any level surface. For more information, visit EcoGardenSystems.com. Use coupon code WIVEG125 to save $125 and get free shipping. A $250 value on the purchase of an Eco Garden Original Garden Unit, available only in stone color. Purchases must be made to the website EcoGardenSystems.com forward slash store. Offer valid through December 31st, 2018. Available to the contiguous United States. Beans and Barley Marketing Cafe, a neighborhood specialty grocery store for the east side and greater Milwaukee area, where you can find all you need from fresh produce to bakery to organic frozen dinners, from wine to fresh with carrot juice, a health food store with hundreds of products, vitamin supplements, bath and body items, magazines, cars, books, and a knowledgeable staff. Catering available, open daily at 8 a.m. The restaurant serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week with a menu of good, healthy, homemade food, including vegetarian and non-vegetarian specialties. 1901 East North Avenue, Milwaukee, 414 278 and online at beansandbarley.com. Do you have a problem with deer or small herbivores eating your vegetation? There is a natural solution that is safe for your pets and family. BobX is the answer. An environmentally friendly solution to protect your plants will not wash off and is guaranteed. BobX deer was independently tested against nine known competitors and rated 93% effective, second only to a physical barrier. BobX can be used on all types of ornamentals, trees, and shrubs. Ask for it by name at your local independent garden center. Find out more, visit BobX.com. B O B B. E-E-X-C-O-M. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Haas Tools, Tree Diaper, Root Maker, Seeding Square, Rebel Green, Dripping Springs Oil, Zaz Products, Shield and Seal, Pomona Universal Pectin. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. To the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your host Joey and Holly Baird. We were at Blue Mail's Landscape and Garden Center this past Wednesday for our talk on 10 common problems you'll face in your vegetable garden and how to solve them. Had a very nice turnout and crowd. We were the first present presentators on their new outdoor stage. We were very excited to be a yeah, part of that. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. And it's really, they have a lot of plants. They, they are loaded with They're plants, loaded plants right now. Yeah. And they have a lot of, like, um, if you're into yard decorations, mm-hmm. they have a lot of those. Decor. 
decor. They have an ant, like a huge ant riding a bike, a metal ant on top of a metal bike. So if you want that in your yard, they had that there Wednesday. I can't quote for today, but um, definitely, yeah. <laughs> definitely some interesting stuff there. Plus, just ton of plants, vegetables, uh, herbs, vegetables, perennials, herbs. natives, natives. Yeah, they got a lot of natives plants there. And then they have mulch, they have compost, they have everything you need. If you need landscaping services, you can talk with them about that. So there's just and then there's the the coffee shop. And the playground. So where do we find Blue Mills? Blue Mills is located at 4930 West Loomis Road in Greenfield. They can supply and surpass all of your needs. Uh, if you got an answer or if you got a question, they will have an answer for you. You can find uh, more information out at BlueMills.com or you can always give them a call at 414-282-4220. And we always appreciate those who come up to us when we're at Blue Mills and say, hey, we love your show. We like what you're doing uh, here in Milwaukee. Well, Holly, let's bring in our next guest. Let's go to the Ivy Organics 31 Plant Guard Hotline and go to Indiana. Carol Michael is the blogger of May Dreams Gardens, which is a huge blog with well over 2,500 posts going back to 2004. Potted and Pruned is a compilation. It's her book, a compilation of some of the best of these posts, plus some new essays. And her second book, Potted and Pruned, um, or called Homegrown and Handpicked, A Year in the Garden Life, is a second compilation of these great essays. And she's from Indiana. Welcome to the program, Carol. Thank you. It's good to be here. Well, we appreciate you coming on the program, sharing some of your knowledge with all of us. Now, you are a collector of old garden books. What's an unusual tip you may have found in an old garden book that works surprisingly well and you were just kind of shocked by it? Well, I'm not so sure it's a tip, but uh, I like to read uh, My Summer in a Garden by Charles Dudley Warner. He wrote it around 1870, I think. And... um, he he talked about the weed purslane. Have you you guys have purslane in your gardens up there? Yes, we, yeah, do. we do. Well, he had it too, and uh, he he called it um, pusley, and said it was this. It had a moral perversity as a plant because it just grew and grew and grew, and it didn't matter. And so, I took great comfort, I guess, in knowing that all the purslane in my garden that other gardeners had had that same problem 150 years ago. The dev- I guess that is comforting, um, in a way. Um, you, you're you, you on your on your blog uh, your blog there. You've got a post about putting plastic forks with the pointy part up, the handle on the ground, to protect your bean seedlings. Uh, can you explain what that is, and and is it how effective is that? So it's not scientifically proven, but that's my fortress. And I used to have problems with the rabbits would come in and they would just mow down a row of beans. And um, as soon as those seedlings came up, so I, I tried fencing, I tried red pepper um, flakes, I, I tried everything. And finally I got the idea to create a little barrier right by the seedling, and that's where I lined the rows with the forks. And it works surprisingly well. It looks crazy, but it works for me. I've also heard of people doing that to keep cats out of their beds, uh, and they, they find that to be effective as well. The cats won't bed down because there's nowhere to, to lay down at. Oh, right, and that's where I got the idea because people were putting forks in their house plants to keep the cats mm. from digging in their house plants. So I thought, well, it should work out in the garden, and it does. Well, okay, great. Now, um, you seem to have a pro- lot of problems with raccoons. What are they going after, and what helps to tour them? Well, raccoons is a recent problem for me. They showed up this winter, and they were going after the bird seed. Mm. I was feeding birds. I had peanuts for blue jays. I had all kinds of seed out there. And uh, really cleaning up the bird feeding area and putting up a baffle to keep the raccoons from being able to climb up to the feeders, they've gone for now. I'm sure they'll be back if, if I leave a mess out there, but I just try to keep things where they won't, that they don't want to eat around, and then they go off finding food someplace else. Uh, you talk about embracing bugs uh, for a happier life. You say you kill them uh, with caution. What what does that mean, and what kind of bugs are we dealing with uh, when, when we're in the garden here? Well, in my garden, you know, I have the, the usual Japanese beetles. I have squash bugs. I find aphids. I have tomato hornworms. And I'll tell a story. Uh, I met a woman, and, and she just didn't understand why she didn't have any bees in her garden. And you need bees to pollinate some crops like squash. And, well, it turned out that she had paid somebody to to spray for mosquitoes. Mm. And I said, well, there's no bug spray that kills just mosquitoes. You've killed every insect in your garden. 
And we've got to have good bugs with the bad bugs. And so um, kill with caution means don't don't run out with a spray the minute you see a harmful bug. Look for other ways to, to pick that bug off the plant yourself or... You know, in some cases, I just decide not to grow a particular vegetable because it's too buggy in my garden. Well, let, let's talk about some of the good bugs in that that we can that will benefit us. Most of the bugs in our garden are good or benign, and there's very small amount that are actually bad. Um, Do that. Yeah, and you got ladybugs, which are good. They control a lot of the aphid infestation that you may have. Um, right, and, and you can bring those in by you can you can buy them online, uh, but also if you have a well balanced ecosystem, they're going to find that that garden of yours, and then we also encourage people to bring birds into the garden, uh, and they eat those bad bugs as well. So, uh, do you encourage birds to come in your garden? Oh yeah, I've got bird feeders, and then I've tried to plant some uh, native shrubs that have fruit like chokeberry, mm-hmm. service berries, so that there's something for the birds to eat and something to attract them. Right. And, and <clears throat> not, you know, based on what type of bird you're wanting to bring in, it de- determines on what, they're want- what, you, what they eat nat- natively. Uh, so that would be a big uh, challenge, you know, if you're wanting a specific bird, you want to bring in a specific type of feed for them. Right. And I haven't explored it to say, hey, I need this to bring in cardinals. Um, I, I do use certain types of bird seed that I buy to bring in cardinals, such as the safflower. So, but I haven't explored it more than that. But that's something I should probably do is to attract more types of birds to the garden. Definitely. Now we all don't have perfect soil. We may have more of like a clay-like soil. How do we know what kind, like what we have, and how is it best to turn clay soil into more of a, a fluffy, loamier soil? Well, I think in the Midwest, most people would say they have some sort of a clay soil. Um, you can send soil off to be tested, and they'll tell you what you need to do to, to uh, add more nutrition if it needs it. When I was in school, we learned the thumb test where you push the soil between your thumb and your index finger, and if it's a ribbon, you've got clay soil. If it breaks apart, you probably um, have something that tends more towards loam or sand. And the best thing is just keep adding organic matter. Keep adding organic matter to that soil. You know, we always encourage people to, to use, you know, what they have available. Uh, we have a lot of leaves that we bring in. Uh, chemical-free grass clippings are a good one. Coffee grounds as well. But uh, you don't have to spend – I mean, you can invest in – if you've got really bad soil, you can invest in – compost uh, by bulk or uh, you can just use your native material to to continue to build that up and and when you do that the native the microbial life the soil web will begin to develop and worms will come because you don't want to add worms to your garden no uh we you have a number you have two books and and you've got 2500 garden post on your website since 2004 um what is well, do you have a specific post that you really enjoy or you've had a lot of feedback on that you're like, you know, I, did, I just kind of wrote this on a whim and, like, everybody is taking a great pleasure in it? Yeah, I've got a couple of them. One of them is uh, I wrote a post called, uh, I called it, uh, you know, people have gads, gardens attention distraction syndrome, <laughs> and that's when you go out the front door to weed something And then you see something else that means done, so you kind of leave the weeding area and you go clip on something, and then you realize there's a plant that needs to be planted, so you go over there, and then you come back inside and realize your house plants have to be watered. Then you spill water, and then the next thing you know, you're mopping the floor. But out front is those weeds that you started on. And so that's the way sometimes gardening goes. And I call it a gaz. What did I just end up doing? Because I've been everywhere in the garden, and I don't feel like I got anything done. People uh, got a kick out of that. Uh, identified with it. Uh, yes, we we have uh, experienced that as well. <laughs> um, and, and sometimes it helps, you know, at least when, when Holly and I are in the garden, um, I, I kind of know what needs to be done, so I can send her one direction going, okay, I, I need we need to do this, and I can do another thing, so at least something gets done. Right. Um, so where can people find your books at, and, and uh, what can, uh, in addition to that, the... the the, the, the syndrome there, what else can we expect in those uh, books? Um, really just a lot of humor and uh, lighthearted essays about gardening. 
and people tell me that if you read between the lines, you do find a few garden tips in there. Um, my second book, uh, Homegrown and Handpicked, uh, I write about how my dad grew tomatoes, which is the only proper way to grow them. And uh, so I am a staker of tomatoes. I think cagers are they're okay people, but I <laughs> think you ought to stake your tomatoes. <laughs> Well, let's, let's talk about that for a minute. We've got a few moments here. Uh, obviously, the, the past generation gardeners obviously knew a lot more than what we do to a certain level because if they didn't grow it, they couldn't eat it. They didn't just go to the grocery store and pick it up. So what were right. some of your dad's tips on growing phenomenal, successful tomatoes? Well, one of the things he did is he would get composted uh, cow manure from or horse manure from a local farmer. And he'd, he'd dig a hole almost two feet deep and throw that manure in there. And he had to use metal fence posts stuck 18 inches in the ground to support the tomato plants that grew so big. Wow. And so it's the soil nutrition. And I tell people it's soil nutrition. And the other thing is he didn't buy the smallest, tiniest little tomato seedling. He always bought a nice size seedling, whether it was tomatoes or geraniums. He started off with a good, healthy plant. And and your dad fed the soil, not fed the plant, and that's the key Correct. here. Yes, feed that soil, and then it'll take care of the plants. Well, Carol, uh, your books are available. Where are they? On Amazon? Are they on your website? Where can we get get your books at? Uh, they are on Amazon. They're on Barnes and Noble. If you want a signed copy, I do have a link on my website which is www.madedreamsgardens.com. Well, Carol, we greatly appreciate you joining us on the program this morning and sharing some of your garden wisdom with Holly, myself, and all of our listeners. Well, I appreciate having you having me. Thank you. Thank you, Enjoy Carol. the garden today. Absolutely, we will. And when we come back, it's your garden questions and our garden answers. If you have a gardening question, now is the time to call in on the IVorganics.com 3-in-1 Plant Guard Hotline at 414-444-5250. Hostels wants to help you grow your own food. From seed starting supplies, hand tools, drip irrigation, harvesting equipment, and complete line of all-natural pest control solutions, they've got you covered. Keep your garden weed-free with their time-tested, American-made wheel hose that are built to last a lifetime. And the Precision Garden Seeders have proven design for planting a wide variety of seeds. Hosh Tools has what you need to get the most out of your growing space, large or small. Free shipping and outstanding customer service. Shop online or request a free catalog at HoshTools.com. I know you're looking for an alternative to harsh chemicals, but you want professional strength products. BioSafe's Garden Line gives you just that. Professionally used for 20 years, available to homeowners. Organic solutions that are effective. They offer an array of eco-friendly products from plant food, fertilizer, to one-of-a-kind herbicides, organic weed killer. BioSafe's products can be used around children, pets, wildlife, so you can enjoy your yard more. Grow stronger, healthier with BioSafe. Find us on Facebook at BioSafe home and garden and visit us at biosafe.net to learn more get 10 percent off your next purchase at biosafe.net by using coupon code twvg at checkout the number one key to healthy productive plants are the roots starting from seed to full-grown plants rootmaker.com has the answer from seed starting trays with an innovative design that air prunes the roots creating a fabulous root system Never again will you have root-bound plants to multiple-gallon grow bag sizes to raise beds. Rootmaker.com has your grow needs covered. Visit Rootmaker.com. Shield and Seal Vacuum Sealers and the highest quality vacuum sealing products, unique black and clear and all black bags protecting your produce and product better than traditional bags. Find out more at shieldandseal.com. Zaz Products, offering great quality supplements that can help personal health and increase longevity. Committed to bringing you the highest quality products at the lowest price. Find out more at zazproducts.com. Rebel Green, responsibly made natural products that are good for you and the environment. Made in the USA, plant-based, vegan, and always toxic-free. Find out more at rebelgreen.com. 
Pomona's universal pectin is high quality pectin that gels reliably with low amounts of any sweetener. If you're trying to reduce the amount of sugar in your diet, you'll love Pomona's universal pectin. Now you can make healthy homemade jams and jellies sweetened to your taste. You can use sugar, honey, or any alternative sweetener you'd like. Pomona's universal pectin keeps indefinitely when stored in an airtight container. Easy to use, versatile, and comes with directions and recipes in every box. Find out more and where to buy at PomonaPectin.com. Available at most natural food stores and online. Wouldn't you love to get more from your growing space? By utilizing the square foot garden method and properly spacing your plants, Seeding Square will optimize and organize your veggie garden to grow more greens and less weeds. The square foot color-coded seed spacer is a great tool for any garden, ground, container, or raised bed, and all experience levels, even little green thumbs. For more information, visit SeedingSquare.com. Seeding Square is gardening made simple. Mycorrhizae is a beneficial fungus from PlantSuccessOrganics.com that will greatly increase your plant's germination, ability, and healthier root structure. You can increase seed sprouting, root growth, and general plant germination. Mycorrhizae can be used with hydroponic root cutting, seed sprouting, cocoa core, and soil. PlantSuccessOrganics.com carries powder, granule, and tablet form of mycorrhizae. Increase the level of mycorrhizae in your soil to give your plant the optimal opportunity to produce incredible harvest. For more information and to purchase, visit PlantSuccessOrganics.com. Blue Mel's Garden and Landscape Center offers an awesome selection of high-quality garden and landscape products. We have just the plants you're looking for. Annuals, perennials, veggies, herbs, and more. Plus, you can always count on us to answer all of your questions and offer expert advice. Blue Mel's also carries the largest selection of bulk landscape materials in the area. Enjoy a beverage from our coffee shop while your kids run around in our huge playground. Join our growing list of highly satisfied customers. Visit the garden center that offers everything you're looking for. Visit Blue Mel's today. Blue Mel's 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Flame Engineering, Eco Garden Systems, Bob X, Plant Success, Beans and Barley, MI Gardener, Outpost Natural Food Co-op, Root Assassin, Manure Tea, The Gardener's Hollow Leg. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. You're always welcome to call in on the IV Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard Hotline. Uh, if you've got a question, you can certainly do that at 414-444-5250. IV Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard naturally protects your plants, damaging, uh, protects your plants against damaging, damaging sunburn. sunburn. Insects and rodents. Protects newly installed plants and trees, shields, prune, and damaged surfaces. For use on your roses, fruit, nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs, this product is non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic. For more information, visit ivyorganics.com. 414-444-5250. We had we, questions we had come in, social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and all of the like. Uh, um, so our oak leaves, uh, okay to use for mulch, and also um, that black spot that's on those maple leaves which is becoming a more predominant problem. Yeah, can I use that for mulch in my garden? I have a large pile. Uh, please advise. Thank you. Yeah, you certainly can. You can use the oak leaves. You can use, uh, we did a little bit of research on this. You can use those maple leaves that have that black spot on them. It's all okay. Um, if anything else comes up and you're not quite sure, definitely hold off and, you know, ask us. But those two are, are good good to go. Yeah, you can mulch them. The pro- the thing you want to be advised about with the oak leaves is they are very large leaves, and if you don't mulch them, they can mat down on the soil and create a barrier, and the water can't penetrate through them. So either you let them... You, and they're thick. They're, they're thick leaves. Right. You can grind them up with a, a leaf mulcher. Now, if you don't have a leaf mulcher, off the record, you can take your, your lawnmower with a bagger and run over them, and it'll suck them up that way and chop them up, and you use them in mul- as mulch, and they'll feed your soil just fine. Uh, Steve would like to know, when is the proper time to, when do you plant rutabagas and turnips? Sure. So we plant ours in the fall, or like late summer, the first week of August. Yeah. It's technically considered fall growing because you're going to get a fall harvest. Turnips take 60 days. Rutabagas take 90 days to reach maturity. We we had one year of where we had success in the spring. 
And then ever since then, we haven't. So that's why we plant ours in the fall. That's where we find success. The cold, the colder nights are best for these because as it frosts and freezes, they, uh, get, sweeter. they get sweeter and they don't. Like, the days get short and they they like that um, on their uh, root system and and the, it, it's much better for the actual root system. And uh, you know that that's one way in which you can do. It. We've had them go to seed um, in the spring, and we just find that fall planting is much much better. Joy asks, I have some pH strips that I've laid out on the soil around my seeds. The strips did not change color. I followed the instructions, so I am. Uh, the pH on the strips would indicate on the back of the box it's about a four. Uh, will Epsom salt bring it down? Is there something in the house that I can sprinkle on the earth to bring the pH up? Assuming a 5 might be better for my plants, uh, can you help? Some folks say gardening, uh, some folks in the gardening world like to use coffee grounds. Does that bring the pH up or down? Well, first of all, let's uh, talk about the pH level. Uh, pH is scaled on a, uh, on a scale from 0 to 14, neutral being 7.0. The uh, lower the number, the more acidic it is. The higher the number, the more alkaline it is. Typical vegetables like a 6.5 to 7.2 range. Now, coffee grounds will not affect the pH as coffee grounds are neutral as they have been, uh, the acidity have been, has been brewed out of them. So coffee grounds won't affect the soil. It's good nitrogen supplement, but dolomit and lime is actually something you can use. Uh, it's a more common soil amendment to raise the pH to reduce the acidity in the soil, dolomit lime. Uh, in order to lower the acidity, you can use uh, other products. Now, whenever you're trying to adjust the pH, it takes a very long time. There are some more chemical applications in which you can speed up the soil, but it varies by about a half a point over a 12-month period. So it does take some, some time on that. Now, if you're wanting to uh, lower your pH, you can simply just use adding compost, uh, manure, uh, aged manure, organic so, uh, uh, soil amendments like alfalfa meal. Uh, the soil will drop it. Good, good this compost will help bring that soil level down a little bit. So hopefully that will help. And again, your vegetables typically 6.5 to 7.2. You, you know, if you're growing something like blueberries, the acidity needs to be about a 4 on that, uh, 4 to 5.5, five, something in that range, because they do require very acidic soil. And you can get a general idea of where your pH is at uh, from an in-store or local, you know, pick it up from the big box store, your local independent garden center um, test kit. But really, the best way to know exactly what you have and what you need to add is simply send it off to the local university extension office. So you can obviously, the more money you spend, the more detailed information you can get. But you can get very detailed of how much is needed for a, per, uh, a specific item or how much you don't need to add. Rich asks, I stored last year's harvest of garlic from my previous home. I moved in December, and in my garage of the new house, the, the garlic stayed. Uh, can I plant it now, or should I freeze it for three or four weeks? I'm located in Fond du Lac uh, here in Wisconsin. Well, the reason why you would choose to, to freeze it is because if you're going to plant spring garlic, spring garlic needs a number of cold cycles on it, to properly divide so you can harvest it in you know, the fall, late late fall. Uh, that's why typically we plant garlic in October and then harvest it in late June, early July. Southern gardeners and gardeners in very warm climates will take their garlic and put it in a, a, a gallon Ziploc bag of soil and mix the garlic in there, the cloves, and freeze it for three or four weeks to put it through to, to make it mimic it's in a winter climate. So for spring garlic, you could do that. We're kind of past the stage of actually getting it planted outside early and letting it hit some of those cold cycles. We were fortunate enough to put a couple, uh, about a dozen cloves in the ground. We got several cold cycles on it, so it should divide properly. But yeah, you could go ahead and try that. But I would just recommend planting it more in the fall than the spring.
Well, we are out of time, and we certainly appreciate yours. Uh, we always enjoy whenever you come with us each and every week on the program. Programming note, join us next week when we're going to discuss the power of worms and the importance of getting them in your garden and how beneficial they truly are and whether you should till or not, as well as uh, how to plant corn. We've had several questions about growing corn. We personally have grown it. We don't grow it anymore. But we'll go over the steps in which is required. And we'll talk a little bit about the genetically modified corn that the big agriculture industry grows as well. As well as Stacy Murphy. She runs a CSA out of her backyard and she runs some organizations. We'll talk with her. Miss any portion of this program or want to revisit it in its entirety, you can find that under the radio tab at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com miss any pro, uh, more specific interview or individual uh, topic, you can find that underneath the highlight tab under the main page at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com website. Also, till next week, for Holly Baird, I'm Joy Baird, and we will see you in the garden. You've been listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show. Tell a friend and join Joy and Holly again next week so we can all grow together. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is a production of the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com in association with WI Garden Media Broadcast, live from the WNOV 860 AM and the W293CX 106.5 FM, Courier Communications Studios in Milwaukee, Wisconsin.